I'm involved because I've spent years talking to people about how we pay for care, how we deliver care, and what happens when we miss the mark. I want to make sure we get the best for people as things change and that we avoid the worst. In aged care, these are the largest reforms to our social service system since the introduction of Medicare, and it is essential that we do it right the first time. In aged care, funding cuts are putting pressure on budgets and workloads and delays waiting for assessments and care packages have meant that people have not been able to stay in their own home and in some instances have even died while waiting for appropriate care. I want to share a story about an MDIS participant. She requested a face-to-face -face assessment and was denied and she was assigned a planner who could not communicate well due to her poor English. She was recovering from an injury. She has burns to 40% of her body and is wearing a full burn, a burn suit. She is a mum to three kids, and if she had the conversation in person with the assessor would have seen this. Let me tell you a story about a 49-year-old Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander man who is a member of the Stolen Generation and a victim of child abuse. In 2014, Jack had cancer in his arm and as a result has limited use of this arm and chronic pain. He also has significant neurocognitive disability and psychosocial disability. I find it shocking to report to you tonight that Jack's NDI application was rejected. Jack needs a culturally safe NDIS system that works for him. Jack represents one of hundreds of marginalised people who have been repeatedly failed by human services and are at risk of being left behind again. I was at the I was at the stage where I was cutting up. Well, I didn't want to cut up anymore. Jules' ongoing mental health challenges, raising a child with a mental health issue of her own and a son with an acquired brain injury, none of Jules' family are registered for the NDIS. While the NDIS may work well for some, for families like Jules, they're just falling through the cracks. You've heard these powerful stories tonight about care. Will your government improve the quality and the delivery of care for the elderly, for people with disabilities and those living with mental illnesses? Will you work with us, the Queensland Community Alliance, to deliver our proposed solutions? Through no fault of their own, people sometimes are vulnerable in our society and they fall through the cracks and it is government's duty to deliver the services for people, to help them in those times, to get back on their feet. And that is my commitment. <laughs> Just to summarise, Premier, what I heard was that's a yes to recognition, yes, a yes to our care asks, a yes to employment and a yes to meeting with us. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Our power as an organised civil society comes from our ability to take action and the promises we make to each other. So now I call on you to commit to action. If you are going to sign up to be a part of the campaign to improve care in Queensland, please wave your card in the air.